Hemiplegia Hemiplegia is a condition caused by brain damage or spinal cord injury that leads to paralysis on one side of the body. Features of hemiplegia Here is an easy mnemonic to remember the features. Mnemonic is hemiplegia. H stands for headache. A stands for embolic or thrombotic infarct. M stands for memory impairment. I stands for imbalance or poor motor skills. P stands for post seizures trauma. L stands for loss of consciousness. A stands for epidural hematoma. G stands for growing neoplasm. I stands for infarct mostly cerebral. A stands for anti-diabetic drugs like insulin usage. Causes of hemiplegia Stroke Strokes are one of the most common causes of hemiparesis. The severity of muscle weakness can depend on the size and location of a stroke. Brain infections A brain infection can cause permanent damage to the cortex of the brain. Most infections are caused by bacteria, but some infections may also be viral or fungal. Brain trauma, a sudden impact to head, can cause permanent brain damage. Common causes of trauma include car collisions, sports injury, and assaults. Genetics, an extremely rare mutation of the ATP1A3 gene, can cause a condition known as alternating hemiplegia in children. This disorder affects about 1 in 1 million people. Brain tumors, brain tumors can lead to a variety of physical problems, including hemiplegia. Signs and symptoms of hemiplegia impaired motor skills, difficulty in grasping or holding objects, weakness of muscles, or stiffness of one side of the body, permanently contracted muscles, or muscle spasticity, poor balance, difficulty in walking. Treatment of hemiplegia People living with hemiplegia usually undergo a combination of rehabilitation therapy, which typically involves physical therapists, mental health professionals, and rehabilitation therapists. Physiotherapy approaches for the management of hemiplegia. Number 1. Conventional therapies. It includes Therapeutic exercises, traditional functional retraining, like range of motion exercises, muscle strengthening exercises, mobilization activities, fitness training, and compensatory techniques. Number 2. Neurophysiological approaches. It includes muscle re-education approach. Neurology treatment, techniques like sensory motor approach or Rude's approach. The Rude approach provides the origin for many of the facilitation and inhibition techniques. Rude developed a system of therapeutic exercises enhanced by cutaneous stimulation for patients with neuromuscular dysfunctions. Movement therapy approach or Brinstrom techniques. Brinstrom treatment includes encouraging whatever movement is possible and building on it through strengthening, sensory stimulation, positive reinforcement, verbal feedback, and the use of reflexes. 
Treatments will involve tasks that are difficult but achievable. Bobath approach. The Bobath approach rests on a number of principles that include encouragement of normal movement patterns, focusing on quality of movement, normalization of tone to facilitate active movement, positioning and posture in lying, sitting and standing and discouragement of compensatory movements, peripheral neuromuscular facilitation techniques, PNF patterns is used for the upper and lower extremities, and is broken into diagonal 1 and diagonal 2 patterns. For upper extremity, D1 flexion include, shoulder flexion, adduction, external rotation, forearm supination, wrist radial deviation and flexion fingers flexion d1 extension include shoulder extension abduction and internal rotation forearm pronation wrist ulnar deviation and extension fingers flexion d2 flexion include shoulder flexion abduction and external rotation forearm supination wrist radial deviation and extension fingers extension d2 extension include shoulder extension adduction and internal rotation forearm pronation wrist ulnar deviation and extension fingers flexion for lower limb d1 flexion include hip flexion, adduction and external rotation, ankle dorsiflexion and inversion, toes extension, D1 extension include hip extension, abduction and internal rotation, foot plantar flexion and eversion, toes flexion. D2 flexion include hip flexion, abduction and internal rotation, foot dorsiflexion, and eversion, toes extension, D2 extension include, hip extension, adduction, and external rotation, foot plantar flexion and inversion, toes flexion. Number 3, Motor Relearning Program for Stroke. Number 4. Contemporary Task-Oriented Approach Functional Electrical Stimulation In hemiplegia, functional electrical stimulation has been demonstrated to be beneficial to restore motor control, spasticity, and reduction of hemiplegic shoulder pain and subluxation. Biofeedback. Biofeedback is a modality that facilitates the cognizant of electromyographic activity in selected muscle or awareness of joint position sense via visual or auditory cues. Mental imagery. Imagining moving the paralyzed half of your body may help activate the parts of the brain responsible for movement. Mirror box therapy. In mirror therapy, a patient performs exercises with an unaffected limb, but because of the reflective surfaces inside the box, it appears as though the affected limb is being exercised. Modified constraint induced movement therapy. This therapy involves restraining the side of the body unaffected by hemiplegia. This treatment option forces the weaker side to compensate and aims to improve the muscle control and mobility. Posture training. Prone on elbow, this position focus on improving upper trunk, upper extremity and neck or head control, improve range of motion, in hip extension and improve shoulder stabilizers. Quadruped position. 
This position focus on improving trunk, lower extremity, upper extremity, and neck or head control. Improves hip, shoulder and elbow stabilizers. Bridging, focus on improving lower trunk and lower extremity control. Improve hip and ankle strategies. Weight bearing at feet and ankles. Sitting, focus on improving upper trunk, lower trunk, lower extremity and head, neck control. It is important for upright balance control. Kneeling and half kneeling, this position, improve hip and trunk stabilizers. Modified plantigrade, focus on improving head and neck, trunk, and upper plus lower extremity. Increase extensor range of motion, at elbows, wrists, and fingers. Standing, focus on improving head, neck, trunk, and lower extremities control, in fully upright posture. Conventional gait training. It includes, symmetrical weight bearing training, weight shifting, stepping training, heel strike, single leg standing, push off or calf rise. Subscribe this YouTube channel and press the bell icon. Thank you.